Okay, we're going to be starting the meeting now. Good evening and welcome to Haverford Township's Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Today is May 8th, 2023. The board met in executive session prior to this meeting to discuss a legal matter. I now ask our township manager to call the roll. Commissioner Gondek? Present. Commissioner Forsty Grupp? Here. Commissioner McCluskey? Here. Commissioner Cavender? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Here. Commissioner Hart? Here. Commissioner Wexler? Here. Commissioner Trombetta? Here. And Commissioner Holmes is out this evening. Thank you. Um, I ask everyone to join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Deputy Chief Hagan, take it away. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on our agenda as published is the reading of proclamations. I now invite Deputy Chief Hagan to join us at the front of the room for his presentation. Good evening. Each year, half the township honors our officers for during our monthly May meeting for some of the outstanding work they've done the year prior. The members of this department are the best of the best, and some of the awards presented here tonight are just a glimpse of the work they do every day to make this community a safe community to live in. This week is the beginning of the annual Police Week Memorial, which honors officers who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Sadly, this year, officers from our department will be gathering in, with the Redding family in Washington, D.C. to honor Sergeant Kevin Redding as his name is added to the memorial wall. Before we begin tonight, I'd like to take a moment of silence to honor 27-year-old Defer Police Officer Robert Schistler, who died yesterday from wounds he stained, sustained from being shot in the line of duty. Thank you. We'll now begin. Lieutenants, can you come forward, please? As I read your names, officers, please come forward to the front here on the right hand side, my right hand side. Sergeant Robert McCrate, Detective Hoffnell, Officer Hughes, Officer James Jones. Officer Sean McLaughlin, Officer Thomas Murtha, Thanks. I gotta put my glasses on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on Monday, October 17, 2022, Sergeant McCrate learned that the Wow Wow in Westchester Pike and Upper Darby had a large amount of cigarettes taken from the delivery truck. Given this incident and numerous other, other incidents involving thefts from delivery trucks at Wow Wow, Sergeant McCrate spoke to the manager at the Wow Wow and inquired about delivery and schedule times. Sergeant McCrate learned that the Wow Wow 1000 Darby Road was scheduled to receive the delivery between 2100 and 00 hours. Officers conducted business checks at the store for any suspicious vehicles in and around the store or following the delivery trucks. One vehicle in particular, dark color SUV with distinctive marks on the hood, which was involved in the previous thefts. Around 22 32 hours on October 17th, also Martha and Sean McLaughlin were at 1000 Darby Road and they observed the delivery truck north on Darby Road and turned west on Manoa Road into our lot, into Wawa lot. At this time, also Martha observed the dark color SUV behind the truck. The vehicle matched the description that was put out by Detective Huffnell. Officer McLaughlin was able to catch up and stop the vehicle. The driver was detained for investigations. Officer Viola did indicate that Evan, the driver had an interlock license. There was no interlock system in the vehicle, which is a misdemeanor. Upon checking the exterior of the truck with officers Jones and Hughes, Sergeant McCrate observed that there was, was an extra match to the vehicle wanted in the previous thefts. The subject was arrested for the interlock violation later at the Delaware County Prison. His vehicle was seized pending further investigation also seized his property. Detective Hucknell was advised of the incident 
and since the arrest and no reports of theft from the delivery truck had been reported. They continued the investigation was able to gather evidence from his cell phone linking the thefts in Hereford Township and other jurisdictions. Based off this exceptional police work, organized theft ring was interrupted and numerous theft cases were closed out. Sergeant McCrate, Detective Huffnell, Anthony, Officer Anthony Hughes, Officer James Jones, Officer Sean McLaughlin, Officer Thomas Murtha, Officer Chris Viola, or actions are accredited to themselves in the Halford Township Police Department. So they are hereby awarded the accommodation of merit. Congratulations. Officer Aikens, will you come forward, please? Russ? This combination is awarded to an officer who performs a life-saving act under extraordinary circumstances, whereas the officer took direct, immediate, positive actions to preserve the life of another human being who was in danger of dying. This action was taken by the officer did prevent the use of the loss of human life. The circumstances of the act, such would delay in providing assistance, would in all probability result in the person's death. Officer Aikens and Officer Lane are awarded the life-saving accommodation. For on fr Friday, April 1st, 2022, at 12.08 hours, Halford Township Police, along with emergency services, responded to Halford College Gym, located on West Lancaster Avenue, for a cardiac arrest of a 20-year-old. Officer Lane and Officer Russell Aikens arrived on location a short time later, find an AD AED connected to Barber and Halford College security personnel and Halford College Athletics Department performing CPR. Officer Lane and Officer Aikens assisted, confirmed that he was not breathing and had no pulse, and they took over CPR. Narbeth Ambulance and Medics arrived on location and immediately began life-saving measures. Their efforts included approximately 25 shots, shocks from a defibrillator, and the administration of drugs, which included sodium barcode and calcium chloride. Officer Aikens and Officer Lane rotated performing CPR and chest compressions for exhausting 54 minutes when medics were able to detect a faint pulse on the subject and transport him to Lankland Hospital. The hospital was contacted several days later and spoke to the staff who advised that he was in critical condition and still in a coma. After the next several weeks, they continued to check on his condition and learned he was no longer in a coma and his condition was slowly improving. On May 14th, the ICU, ICU nurse tending to him advised that the condition continues to improve and that he is scheduled to be transported to a hospital close to her home in Los Angeles, California. Officer Aikens and Lane took direct, immediate, positive action to preserve the life of the subject. Any delay in providing that assistance would all probably result in the loss of life. Congratulations. Thank you. Officer Villanueva, Sergeant Coleman, Sergeant McCrate, Detective Goodman, Detective Huffnell, Detective Johnson, Officer Brawley, Officer Howard, Officer Hughes, Officer Murtha, Officer Patterson, Distinguished unit accommodation. On Thursday, February 16th, 2023, at approximately 0153 hours, Officer Villanueva was on, on patrol in the area of the SEPTA Penfield Station Route 100 high speed line. 
Due to the rash of theft from vehicles and burglary that occurred in the weeks prior, Officer Villanueva was patrolling that area to deter a possibility of a suspect being transient subject entering Hereford Township from the high-speed line. The liaison that De Detective Huffnell sent out on Saturday, February 11, 2023, was for a burglary that occurred at 533 Cathmere, where stolen credit cards were used at the Wawa between 0230 hours and 315 hours on February 11th. The subject in the liaison was a white male with a beard wearing a winter cap, dark sweatpants with a white spot on the left leg and dark hooded sweatshirt under a red and maroon outer sweatshirt with a backpack. Subsequently, on Tuesday, February 14th, 2023, Detective Goodman sent a liaison out regarding the same individual matching the description from a ring doorbell cameras where three thefts from vehicle were done in the area of February 11th. During Officer Villanueva's patrol on February 16th, he heard someone on the platform who walked out from behind the shelter that immediately fit the description of the above liaisons. At that time, Officer Villanueva engaged in conversation with the male who stated that he was headed back into the city in the area of 8th and Wraith Race after spending time with a friend. Officer Villanueva then exited his patrol vehicle, and at that time, the individual walked further out from behind the shelter, allowed him to clearly observe an easily identifiable mark on his left pant leg that he recognized from previous liaisons of the sub suspect wanted for the possible burglary and theft from vehicles. As additional officers arrived, it was confirmed that the backpack belonging to the male was a black backpack that also matched one of the same the subject had worn in the liaisons just before entering the Wawa. As the investigation continued, Sergeants Coleman and McCrate and Officers Howard, Brawley, Hughes, Patterson, and Murtha arrived on scene. At this time, the suspect was taken into custody, searched into incident to arrest. Removed from his left rear pocket were numerous cards, including a driver's license for a male with an old Manoa Road address and a large amount of cash in high dollar denominations. Officer Howard responded to the address on Old Manoa Road. Sergeant McCrate and Sergeant Coleman also responded to Old Manoa Road to check for any additional thefts from vehicles. While on location, Officer Howard did observe a 2018 white Dodge Ram in the driveway with the interior disarray. Officer Howard made contact with the resident and owner of the vehicle who confirmed there was a wallet and roughly $3,000 U.S. currency missing from the vehicle, which was in three different envelopes which matched which, what was recovered from the suspect upon his, incident, upon his incident to arrest. At this time, Sergeant McCrae observed a gray 2018 Jeep parked in front of Old Manoa, a residence on Old Manoa Road with the items inside in disarray. Sergeant Coleman observed a red Toyota RAV4 parked in the driveway of Old Manoa Road, also with the items in disarray. Contact was made with both residents and owners. They stated that four packs of cigarettes and loose change was taken. The information was conveyed back to officers on scene of the pedestrian investigation. The resident owner at Old Manoa Road stated that their parents were away but would contact police if anything was missing at a later date. Back at headquarters, found on the suspect's backpack was his ID, which gave his name, his residence. Additionally, cards issued to other people, including ID and backpack cards of victims from Burgley of Cathmere Road, along with bank cards of the victims of a theft from the vehicle on Brooklyn Boulevard, along with a large bag of coins, empty bank envelopes, at the bottom of the backpack was maroon red sweatshirt that matched what was worn in the burglary liaison when the subject entered the Wawa, used the victim's debit and credit card to make purchases. A check of the suspect's name revealed numerous warrants from surrounding counties in Pennsylvania. Due to the overwhelming evidence that was recovered and the suspect or subject matched the description of a previous burglary and theft from vehicles, decision was made to bring Detective Johnson in, who was on call, Detective Huffnell, the originally assigned detective. Detective Huffnell and Johnson arrived at headquarters, Mirandized the suspect, received written statement of his involvement in the burglary on Cathmere, as well as nine thefts from vehicles on February 11th, 2023 and February 16th of 2023. Furthermore, Detective Huffnell did charge Rowcroft Ro with felony burglary and various other counts. Because officers worked together as a unit displaying professionalism, good police instincts, they were able to make an arrest while cl closing nine cases of theft, one case of burglary within the township. For these reasons, the listed officers are being awarded this distinguished unit accommodation.
Detective Fuller, Sergeant Reynolds, Detective Johnson, Detective Lachlan, Officer Akins, Officer Hanna, Officer Larry McLaughlin. On Tuesday, December 20th, 2022, at 0503 hours, Haverford Township Police responded to the area of 35 Myrtle Avenue for a possible theft in progress of a catalytic converter. Initial responding officers checked the area with negative results. Officer Fuller remained in the area after clearing and continued to check the neighboring streets. Officer Fuller received information that one of the vehicles involved may be a white Audi sedan. Approximately 40 minutes later, Officer Fuller observed a suspicious subject in the area of Heatherwood and Wynn and conducted a pedestrian investigation. The subject stated that he was visiting a relative at 406 Wayne. Knowing this address did not exist in Haverford Township, Officer Fuller further investigated. The subject showed him the area, which was for the 400 block of Wynn. Parked on the 400 block was a white Audi sedan with another individual slumped down in the seat, presumably pretending to sleep. Additional officers responded to the scene. Based on the previous dispatch, the recent increase of catalytic converter thefts, the suspicious explanation of visiting a family member, the suspicious occupant pretending to be asleep, and the white Audi matching the description, both individuals were taken back to police headquarters for questioning. The vehicle was impounded back to police headquarters pending a search warrant. A search warrant was approved and executed. Located inside the trunk of the vehicle were four catalytic converters with fresh cut marks worth potentially thousands of dollars. One of the catalytic converters was confirmed to belong to a resident at 28 Myrtle Avenue. One of the subjects was Mirandized and did confess to being involved in the theft of a catalytic converters this morning. Officer Fuller went above and beyond his routine patrol duties and conducted such a thorough investigation that led to the apprehension of two individuals who victimized multiple citizens and at least one Haverford Township resident. Officer Fuller's actions are a credit to himself and the Haverford Township Police Department, and he is hereby awarded the commendation of merit. For the outstanding accomplishment as a result of teamwork, the additional officers who responded and investigated this incident are being awarded this distinguished unit commendation. Sergeant James Reynolds, Detective Mark Johnson, Detective Stephen Lachlan, Officer Russell Wakens, Officer Kevin Hanna, and Officer Lawrence McLaughlin. Lieutenant Dolan, Sergeant DeSanctis, Detective Vernaccio, Officer Huguenair, Officer Williams, Officer Shannon, Officer Villanueva, Officer Marchesani, and Officer Offelman. These officers are being issued distinguished unit combination. On Monday, July 25th, 2022, at 15, 12 hours, Delcom received a call for a subject loading a firearm outside a giant food store located at 116 West Township Line Road. The subject was acting erratically, throwing cards on the ground and talking to customers. A second call was received from an employee of Giant when the subject told them to go back inside the store or he would shoot her. The third call was received from the manager of Giant. The subject was found to be licking his fingers and touching customers as they left the store. The manager confronted the subject and he responded by saying he had a permit to carry the gun. Also resp officers responded to Giant and upon arrival, they found a firearm on the ground. The subject had discarded it there and gone into the store. 
Officer McDermott McDonald had just arrived on the scene to encounter a subject as he was exiting the store. These officers did not hesitate in dealing with the armed and dangerous adversary. They immediately took him into custody. The subject was identified as a subject out Upper Darby, which Upper Darby Police had sent out to be on the lookout. He was wanted for pointing a firearm at a family member earlier in the day. It indicated he was known to be armed with a handgun and there was an active 302 commitment on him. Chief Iowa, Deputy Chief Hagan, Lieutenant Dolan, Sergeant Chambers, Sergeant DeSancta, Sergeant Long responded to the scene also with Officers Howard, Huguenard, Andrew Jones, Officer Marchesani, Officer Shannon, Officer Uffelman, Villanueva, and Williams. Responding officers worked as a team to secure the scene, including the handgun on the ground, began interviewing witnesses. De Detective McGuire and Vernascia responded and began to collect the evidence. Officer McDonald and Sergeant Long did transport the subject to Crozier Crisis to get the help they needed. Detective Vernaccio did prepare a warrant charging the subject with aggravated assault, terrorist threats, harassment, recklessly endangering another person, possession of instrument of crime. Subject was released from Crozier Crisis and was taken in custody and transported to Delaware County Prison. These officers worked together as a unit displaying professionalism as good police instincts that were able to gain control of the incident. For these reasons, they're being awarded this thing of combination. Officer Jones, can you come forward, please? Last but not least. James. Officer James Jones has been awarded the Officer of the Year for 2022-2023. Officer James Jones has been with the Haverford Police Department since 2019. He was nominated by the supervisors because of what he brings to the, the, the department on an everyday basis. Officer Jones is always the first officer to volunteer for assignment, always one of the first officers to step up to assist fellow officers, and always one of the first to volunteer to handle calls. Officer Jones is described by the supervisors as diligent and steadfast. In 2022, he was recommended to be sent to a field training officer so he can train future officers to mirror his everyday performance. In the year 2022, he was first in criminal complaints, first in backup officers, second in parking tickets issued, second in school foot beats. With a baby on the way in 2022, he was observing the past school incidents around the, the country and his concerns were to thwart any incidents in his district. He was fourth in footbeat, showed his diligence of the problem areas where he patrolled and realized there's more than just vehicle patrols were needed. He was fourth in traffic citations, again shows his diligence of the traffic concerns in the township. He was fifth in vehicle stops, shows his ability to recognize the problems with traffic in the township. He was fifth in selective enforcements, never questioned assignments handed down. And he was fifth in incident reports written, 492. This does not indicate the incidents in the district he patrolled, but also throughout the whole township. Officer Jones' supervisor used the following to describe him. I'm sure there'll be other officers named who might be worthy, but the totality of what Officer Jones brings not only to a squad, but to the department as a whole, should be mirrored by every officer. His intellect regarding the job makes it easy for sergeants to supervise, always modest and never one to self-promote. Officer Jones can be counted on to complete any task given. Based on these points, he was awarded Officer of the Year for 2022. Congratulations. <laughs>
We'll allow for just a moment to allow them to go outside. Thank you so much for your patience. We will now move to our citizens forum, which allows individuals to speak on agenda items. We're grateful to each and every one of you for being here tonight. Um, given the size of the crowd we have, um, and out of respect for everyone's time, I'd like to ask that everyone limit their speaking to approximately three minutes and as much as possible remain concise. So with that said, we'll begin with our registered speakers. First, I'm pleased to welcome Representative Napoleon Nelson from Montgomery County. Mr. Nelson, please join us at the podium. Oh. Feels weird. Um, thank you all uh, for doing the work that I suspect you're getting ready to do. I am Napoleon Nelson. I am the state representative in Montgomery County in Cheltenham, Jenkintown, and Springfield. I am also um, proud to be one of many, um, both prime sponsors, but uh, champions for what we're working on in Harrisburg in passing legislation to try and help do away with hate crimes in Pennsylvania. Um, crime is terrible, hate is terrible, hate crimes are just even worse. Um, in a community where uh, there is no place uh, for that sort of action. There's no uh, responsibility that is too great for combating hate crime. The work that you guys are doing is tremendous because while legislation can get us but so far, um, realistically the work of healing communities and getting folks past that desire to or that um, motivation to commit crimes based on you know, any number of identifiable um, personalities, traits, identifiers, um, that has to happen at home. That has to happen in communities. That has to happen not just with you guys, but with the folks who are oddly behind me um, and the folks who just left the room. So I am thrilled to be able to work with you all uh, to help make sure that we pass this uh, hate crimes legislation in, um, in Harrisburg and really to make sure that you guys have all that you need to listen, to make sure you have all that you need to embody that right here in Haverford Township. So uh, thank you all so much for what you're about to do, as I said, um, and for the leadership that you guys are, are providing for all of us throughout the Commonwealth. It is an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming all the way here for this. Next, I'm pleased to welcome former Fourth Ward Commissioner Dan Siegel to the podium. Thank you. Dan Sigal, 1705 Maryland Drive, Havertown. The last time I was on this side was in an old building that, thank God, we had the good sense to get rid of. Um, but I'm here not to talk about the library on the agenda, but to talk about what the representative from the district where I grew up just talked about, um, the legislation in Harrisburg and your resolution. It's a very good thing to do. As you know, and as residents know, when I announced a year before my term was up that I was not going to seek another term, I explained somewhat. I didn't go into all the details of the hate I, I received as a commissioner, of the death threats I received as a commissioner, of the offers from the police to provide plain clothes protection for me because of those threats. The threats and the issues that prompt the crime and the hate are pervasive and they need to be dealt with. This legislation that this resolution uh, supports is excellent and is certainly something that should be done. I also encourage you to consider that the resolution should also mention that each of you should stand with the targets of 
the hate. It is very important for the victims, the people who are targeted, to be able to know that not only does their community support the legislation, but that you also support the people, because those are the most vulnerable moments for all of us. This is an important week in, in this whole issue. This week is also in schools, No Place for Hate Day. And it is a project of the Anti-Defamation League. And when I announced that I wasn't seeking re-election, I all but said my goal was to join the Anti-Defamation League board. I did that. I now co-chair community outreach for the Philadelphia branch of the ADL. And community outreach is critical because it allows you to build bridges by talking with people, by breaking down the walls that, that are out there because the legislation is excellent, but the key is the communication, the ability for everyone to speak and work together and discover that we are not evil, we are not terrible because we disagree whether politically or racially, religiously, whatever the cause. This legislation is an excellent start. Legislation can help a lot, but we can even do more. Last year, there was a 23% increase just in incidents of anti-Semitic hate crime, not to mention all of the other types of hate crime. These bills target that. It is vitally important that this board, which has supported it, we passed a Human Relations Commission ordinance when we were one of the first communities, and it was hotly contested, and there were a lot of really nasty things said about me and others who were on the board at that time. It is time to continue the support and not only continue it, but to be there and stand with all of the people so that everyone in the community knows that we are one community standing together to be one despite our differences. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'm pleased to invite up Chad Brooks. Good evening. My name is Chad Brooks, 400 Campbell Road. Last uh, Memorial Day, I had offered with uh, Commissioner Holmes to speak, but he had already had an excellent speaker. He had a, actually a World War II veteran. And just as a, a, an aside, one of the underrated events in Hanover Township is the Memorial Day celebration. I highly recommend that commissioners and the public come to it. I've never been disappointed. I've been coming for 20 years. So it's always well done and certainly worth a few hours of your time. Uh, does anybody know what today is? May 8th, 1945. May 8th, 1945 was the unconditional surrender of the Nazi Germany to the, uh, European, the, the troops fighting in Europe. Uh, and I will explain the significance of that date. Uh, in... Uh, the 1970s, I was in Japan, and I was stationed to the 500th Military Intelligence Group. As it happened, that uh, group was composed mostly of Japanese Americans. Uh, Japanese Americans, Nisei. Nisei in Japanese means second generation. So these were the children born in the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, as you know, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7th, it was a great shock to the nation, and terrible things happened. And one of them was the decision to inter all Japanese, including American citizens. Uh, a series of concentration camps were developed in the western states and two in Arkansas. And over 100,000 Japanese citizens were interred in these camps. You can imagine now the turmoil of the Japanese community. How are they doing with this? How does this affect them? And there was uh, dissension within the, the community of how they were going to deal with it. There were uh, those who thought, we want nothing now to do with this government. And there were others who said, we're going to fight. We're going to volunteer to fight. At first, the government refused to allow uh, Japanese Americans to enlist in the service. And uh, this went on for some period of time. Um, but in, uh, as the war went on, uh, there was a uh, recognition that they needed these manpower. They needed the manpower. They were drafting, drafting men as old as 37. 
And here were a group of men who wanted to serve. Uh, so uh, in February 1943, President Roosevelt activated the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. This was one year, one year after the uh, Removal Act. So you can imagine the discussions that went on in the Japanese American community. One of the things we talked about tonight with uh, the, the uh, hate laws is the Japanese American community has learned that honor their veterans, but also honor those who refused. And they were able to, to do both at the same time and recognize that both had a point of view that was valuable. Uh, he signed the order and the, uh, this unit was formed. Now there were already Japanese Americans fighting. The, uh, in the Hawaiian Islands, a third of the population was Japanese American. They were never interred. Uh, they were the majority of the National Guard in Hawaii. So a group of Japanese Americans, the 100th Battalion, uh, was stationed in Italy and earned a reputation as a fierce fighting force. Uh, when the decision was made that now Japanese could serve, uh, recruiters went out to the camps and there was a very positive response. There was uh, individuals who objected to the loyalty oath, uh, the government uh, punished them severely and they were imprisoned. And I will come back to that story. But the, uh, many of the men served. About two thirds of the unit were Hawaiian, and about a third were uh, Japanese Americans who lived in California, Washington state. Uh, and this force was trained in Camp Selby, Mississippi. They trained for almost a year and then went to Italy. They fought in Italy and then they were removed and they were part of the invasion of southern France. And they fought their way through France. There's a very famous battle, Vages, and uh, the significance of that will come towards the end of this. The Vages battle that was fiercely fought, there was a battalion of Texans who got trapped the Japanese soldiers wrecked them at tremendous cost to themselves. Uh, it turns out that the 442nd is the most decorated unit in the history of the United States military. There were about 18,000 men that served. 4,000 Purple Hearts were awarded. 4,000 Bronze Stars, 560 uh, Silver Stars, 21 Medals of Honor, seven, seven Presidential Citation Unit. Uh, the, Japanese Americans were actually made honorary Texans for rescuing the Texans of Vajas. After the war, um, they came back, and if you had ever seen the movie uh, Bad Day at Black Rock, which won an Academy Award for Spencer Tracy, the, the, the war wasn't over for them, and they still, they still had to overcome a lot of prejudice and, uh, and uh, bigotry. And... Uh, uh, President Truman, who himself had fought at Vajas and understood in the war, First World War, he understood how difficult these troops, the, the conditions that these troops had met. He said he wanted to recognize the 442nd. It turned out the day that he was to honor them, the weather was terrible, and some of his aides recommended not do it. He said, no, no, no. After they went through, I can stand a little rain. And he told the troops, you fought not only the enemy, but you fought prejudice and you have won. Keep up that fight and we will all continue to win to make this great republic stand just for what the Constitution says it stands for, the welfare of all the people all the time. Uh, President Truman turned out to be a remarkable man. He commuted the sentence of the refuseniks, the, the no-no boys, they called them, who did not want to serve because he understood the tensions in the Japanese American community. Now, uh, I served with men in the 442nd. Uh, if you know Hawaiians, they were really characters. There was a, a little bit of tension with the Hawaiians and the uh, mainland Japanese, the Buddha heads and the Kotanks, and they had to learn how to get together. Uh, but I always en enjoyed the, the veterans of the 442nd. But there was another group that was never really recognized because up until the 1970s, their service was secret. And these were, I know, okay. I know, I'll speed it up. <laughs> okay. But I, yeah. these are men I particularly want to recognize because these were the men who joined the military intelligence service. They were the linguists, the translators,
who came onto the scene and served under difficult conditions. A lot of the times, their commanders did not want them to go to the front lines because they're so valuable as translators, but they insisted. They were extremely valuable in Okinawa because in Okinawa, uh, the radical uh, militarists had instructed people to commit suicide. So these men were able to go back in the native language and encourage people to surrender and explain why they should surrender. And it was uh, tremendously important. They were the translators at the war crimes. I served with two men in particular that I want to recognize tonight, George Yamaguchi and Roy Sheba. Uh, George was in Ohio, Ohio, and his family was never interred, but he volunteered for 442nd, but he was recruited because of his language skills to serve with the military intelligence service. At the beginning of the war, in all the armed forces, there were only 100 people who could speak Japanese. So that's how critical uh, these uh, Nisei linguists were. They translated 20 million documents during the course of the war, including some critical ones. But, they, but their service after the war uh, was even more important. They stayed in the clandestine service. They served through the Korean War and through the Vietnam War. Uh, Roy Sheba volunteered at the age in his 50s to go to Vietnam when American troops were no longer there but they, they were allowed to have civilians. We volunteered and continued to serve in Vietnam. So that is a service that we got out of Japanese Americans. Uh, they have gone, they are a successful group, but they suffered terribly. And I, because it's, it's Asian American Month, that's why Commissioner Holmes recommended I speak to you tonight. And I just uh, hope that it, it solves these gentlemen perfectly, I think. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Brooks, thank you so much. Next, I'm pleased to invite Nikki Senecal up to the podium. Hello, Nikki Senecal, the 100 block of Walnut Hill Lane. In 2010, I joined the Friends of the Haverford Township Free Library Executive Board and started raising money for the library's renovation or relocation or renovation, or relocation, or renovation. Last year, after completing my second term as president, I rotated off the board. I was tired of the library's renovation not happening. In the past 13 years, longer, if you count the work that had been done before I signed on, we have kicked the can of maintaining and improving the library down the road. This has not come without costs, as those who remember the summer of the great HVAC fiasco can tell you. I've heard general agreement in this community that the library needs upgrades, but I'm also hearing concerns about how much we should spend. Investing in the library provides returns for the whole community, whether you use it or not. I'm a great library user. I read a lot. According to the calculator on ilovelibraries.org, last year I saved over $650 using the library. That's an individual amount, but there are greater community benefits. If you're not a great reader or don't borrow museum passes, or don't attend the summer music series or other library programs, there are other ways to measure your return on the investment in the library. We can take the example of Summer Slide, what students forget over summer vacation. Summer Slide can be mitigated by student participation in library summer reading programs. And students can retain not just reading and language arts skills, but math skills as well. This matters to you even if you do not have children, as I do not, uh, because an educated society is crucial for economic growth. Speaking of economic growth, Businesses can receive halo effect spending simply by their proximity to the library. Research has shown that for every dollar of investment in Pennsylvania libraries, the community can expect to receive $5.50 in economic benefit, which tracks with national investigations as well. Patrick Flavin at Bay Baylor University found that communities that spend more on public good, like roads and libraries, 
uh, reported higher quality of living. It is time for Haverford Township to act boldly in undertaking this renovation so we can, as a community, reap the benefits. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pleased to um, invite Caitlin Naylor up to the podium. Hi. Um, I'm the new librarian at Chestnut Elementary. Um, dream job. And I am here to help voice my students. Um, so I am a Delaware County resident, and I've been following the library's renovation, relocation, renovation, relocation um, since well before college. <clears throat> so I'm very happy to speak here. Um, a community is only as strong as its public library, and here at Chestnut Wald, we absolutely love books. Um, I am frequently at the public library switching books because we get their books, they get our books, which to me is the best thing because that means we're using all the resources in our community. Um, so speaking from the students, I asked them what their perspective was on the library, and all of them had a big smile on their face. Again, these were first through fifth graders interviewed. So here's what some of your younger community members have to say. They said that it is their family routine to go with their mom and dad every Saturday morning. Everyone gets their books for the week. Um, even if they have to get up early to do it because of sports and schedules. Um, they also love the programming. The Lego Club is a very big hit. They love the board game groups, memories of book hunts when they were little, um, running around the stacks upstairs when they weren't supposed to, um, summer reading programs, the Sing movie night and craft was a big hit. Uh, when that movie came out, Read Alouds, they remember PJ Read Alouds when they were little. Um, I was able to attend the Dewey Decimal 5K with a team from our school this year, and I was so impressed with the community outreach for that. Um, in terms of the location, many fifth graders right now are very excited that they can walk to the library next year right after middle school and don't need permission. So that is a hot topic item. They're very excited for that. And they also um, personally are very excited that there is video games and movies that they can also rent on top of books, of course. Um, so personally, just from a teacher perspective, um, librarians do love researching. Um, so I am very impressed with the leadership's ability to focus on accessibility, not only for public space, but also accommodations for sensory friendly spaces. Um, also the focus on makerspace and the focus of the whole reader from early childhood to tweens and also to adults with a very intentional programming. So all this is said with love. I'm going to use the first initials from R V O. L T K L I C D L B K F F and Miss Naylor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Our next registered speaker is Catherine McMahon. Did I mispronounce it? Okay. Moving on, Jacqueline Bryant. Good evening. Um, my name is Jacqueline Bryant, and I live in Havertown in Windsor Park Lane. Although my husband and I are fairly new to town, we have both come to appreciate the Haverford Library. We both love to check out books for our grandchildren who live in the area, and they're always very excited to see a new pile of library books, whether it's an old favorite that we've managed to find again or something new and interesting. And of course, we always also get books for ourselves because we do like to read. And last winter, I started volunteering at the library in youth services. And I now see how important the library is to the whole community. It's especially important to the teens who like to hang out after school um, because of the library's central location in town. And I also see the young parents. Uh, who come in with preschoolers, especially in the morning. Uh, they come in for the story hour and they, they stay to chat. And I remember when, when I had young children how important those connections were um, to me and how important the library was. Um, and I see groups of all ages and interests coming in who, who meet in the library and who meet through the library, uh, whether it's in the building or through Zoom. Um, the group that I've joined happens to be the Hooked on History group, but, you know, there, there are lots of interests um, um, that, that they sponsor. And I also wanted to put in a, a word for the dedicated library staff who 
help all the visitors with grace and skill. And the, I believe the library renovations will help this important resource move into the 21st century uh, with more rooms for groups to meet in, um, better temperature control, better tech access, and so on. Um, so I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak and also to thank you for all the work that you do for the township. Thank you. Thank you so much. That concludes our list of registered speakers. So I now open it up to anybody who'd like to speak on an agenda item. So I'll start on my left hand side here. Anybody in the front row? Moving on, anybody? Kathy, please join us. Good evening, my name is Kathy Dawson and I live in the third ward. I'm here to encourage all the members of this Board of Commissioners to say yes and to pass resolution number 2311-2023 in support of the package of bills addressing anti-hate crimes currently being considered by the state legislature as a response to the growing number of hate crimes and escalation of violence within the state of Pennsylvania. As Dan alluded to, in 2011, the Board of Commissioners in Hanford Township passed an ordinance in favor of creating a Human Relations Commission to prohibit discrimination based on a number of protected classes and specifically added, uh, sorry, and specifically added discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression, because at the time there was a gap in the laws and at, the, at the state level and they were excluded from anti-discrimination laws in, in place in Pennsylvania. This ordinance was passed despite a tremendous amount of pushback and resistance expressed by some residents within the township for a variety of reasons. Fortunately, the ordinance passed by a five to four vote. I was actually chosen to serve as a member of the Human Relations Commission in 2018 and served as the vice chair for approximately a year and a half. During my three year tenure, we did not have to experience any of the possibilities that those who opposed the ordinance at the time feared or believed would actually happen. I'm pleased to see that this board continues to advocate for laws which protect those who are subjected to hate and discrimination, violence and other actions simply because they are who they are and trying to live the life that they want to live for themselves. Thank you for recognizing the significance of these statewide bills and I hope that there will be a unanimous support for this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, anybody in the back there? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Fallon. I am in, uh, live in Rosemont Avenue, uh, down the street from Chestnut Hill Elementary. Sorry about her in there, she's great. Um, I'm also an author and illustrator of books for children. I've written and illustrated about 15 books and illustrated uh, 20 or so other books. And I've been a patron of the uh, Haverford Township Free Library for about 10 years and an active participant in the amazing Comic Cons that they've had over the years, which drew so many kids that were super excited to learn about making comics. Um, as part of my job, I visited libraries all over the country and also abroad, both in schools and communities. And all the libraries are the same. They're an open, welcoming space that offers knowledge, entertainment, and enrichment to all who seek it. No matter who you are, you can go into the library and you can access all these wonderful things. When I was a boy in Upper Darby, I spent many, many wonderful hours walking through the stacks of the cozy children's library at Sellers. And I would just spend all my time there being inspired by books. Uh, I was curious about lots of things, and there seemed to be a book about all those things. I was also finding books about things that I didn't even know I was curious about until I was in that library. And today, I'm sure every day, there's a kid at Haverford Township Free Library wandering the stacks, getting inspired. When I was a kid, I got inspired to make my own books. And I wonder what those kids are getting inspired to do right now. I wonder what they'll grow up to do. A vibrant library is essential 
to a vibrant community. Abford Township Free Library is vibrant and it's essential. And I hope you take all that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move over to my right-hand side. Would anybody like to speak on this side, um, in the front row? Okay, next row. Yes, please. My name is Sam Krakow. I'm at uh, 430 Landmark Avenue. Uh, usually, it's probably not a great idea that I speak off the cuff. I'm not really that good at it. I usually have prepared remarks, but uh, and I'm glad I'm the only person talking about the RCO because I'd hate to see anybody against it. Uh, I'm a construction worker, and I am uh, humbled by the fact that it was a unanimous decision to support the RCO last month, and I hope it will be unanimous again today. Um, the RCO is important because it deals with how we hand out money, taxpayer money, our money, to contracts that are performed in Haverford uh, for construction. And I think we should have the bare minimum of standards when it comes to construction. And they're very simple, um, and we just don't have it uh, written down at the moment. And I think they're very important. We should have uh, we should have contractors that follow labor laws. If you violate labor laws, you should not be in Havertown. You should not be. We should not be paying these people. And there are contractors that violate labor laws. And from personal experience working with them, it's not pretty. Nobody should have to go through that. Um, they should pay a fair wage, the prevailing wage of the area. Um, it is important that workers in Havertown who are provided with taxpayer money are trained to a bare minimum of safety training uh, as defined by OSHA. And lastly, well, I did cheat, I put it down a little bit. Um, we should make sure that all construction workers in Havertown have been adequately trained through an apprenticeship program. And I can tell you from personal experience that apprenticeship programs are very involved. And even when they end, uh, they stress that construction, just like any other um, profession, is a constant process of learning. <coughs> and it should never end. And we should instill that uh, with, uh, with this ordinance to show that we care about the level of training and the people we hire. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, moving on to the next row. Anybody in that next row? Colin. Hi. Setting my timer. My name is Colin McCrossan. I'm a township resident. I live on George's Lane in Ardmore. I'm a concerned taxpayer. And I'm speaking tonight to urge the Board of Commissioners to approve the library renovation plan. Our library is in desperate need of a major renovation. The building is extremely outdated, and our community deserves much better. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer's archive of historic newspapers, the last time the library had a major renovation was in 1979, 44 years ago. Back then, some township residents voiced similar concerns, saying that it was too expensive and that we didn't need a new library. The library hasn't seriously been renovated since 1979. And library staff have voiced concerns about needing an update as early as 1985, according to the Inquirer. Justine Hawker, the library director that year, told the newspaper that the library needed new technology and resources to meet increased demand, saying that, quote, there is not any time of day or evening that we are not having people come in and use the library. That was in 1985. It's even more true today. Our library is a place for people to access the internet, hang out after school, and learn about themselves and the world. 
Library renovation plans have been discussed in this township for decades, but no board has ever taken action to meet the needs of our community until now. I urge you to approve of this plan. I want my tax dollars to go towards a new library, and I think that the township should give the library even more money than it does now. According to the Inquirer archive, our township actually used to have two libraries, a main one and a smaller library near the Manoa Shopping Center called the Manoa Community Library, which was located at 1262 Westchester Pike. It was open from 1967 to at least 1985 when it was struggling to survive because of a lack of funding. How much more would our community benefit from an additional library location? What if we made more long-term investments in the township and in the library? I urge you to approve of this ordinance and to think about new possibilities for the township in the future. Thank you so much. All right, anybody else in that final row there? All right, uh, whichever one. <laughs> Um, good evening, my name is Johanna Zudi and I'm an eighth grader attending Haverford Middle School and I'm here to speak about the library renovation. I believe that the library needs renovation because the children of Havertown definitely need it. It's a way like for people to socialize and have a safe place to respectfully hang out and pursue extra activities to further their education. Um, I moved to America about 10 years ago and we've been Delco based and I've always went to Haverford Library. It's a place where I can study and have fun with my friends at the same time. And I know at the same time, like the adults are also worried about how much like funding is needed and how much money they have to spend. But I think it's a great investment to the community as like it fills a child's mind to just borrow a book and yeah, so. Thank you so much. Looks like we have one more. I spoke last time, so I do not plan on making this very long. I just want to thank you guys for ex uh, approving the renovation and investing in not only the library, but also the community and like everyone that surrounds and goes to the library, because it's not just a renovation on the building itself, but it's also helping and growing the community. And I don't know, it just, it's a really good place for teens and children to become part of the community and do better and learn and explore and stuff. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again for everybody coming and speaking tonight. Um, I'd like to move on, the, on with the agenda. We have our Bureau of Fire update. Yes, I'll present the Bureau of Fire report. The volunteer fire departments reported to a total of 76 incidents in April. 56 of those were township incidents. 20 were out of town mutual aid incidents. The number of average volunteers per call was 18 per call. And the average person <clears throat> volunteer hours committed to those incidents was 1,035 hours. In addition to the committed to the incidents, there was another 1,080 hours of volunteer time committed to training. In Hafford Township, we responded to the fire departments responded to three working fires within the township, a house on the 2100 block of Darby Creek Road, the business, the Sophie's Barbecue on 1901 Darby Road, and then a commercial fire at 956 Railroad Avenue at the Bryn Mawr Extended Care Nursing Home. In addition, we provided eight to five working fires within Delaware County, primarily within Marple and Upper Darby and uh, townships. And that's the report for last month. Thank you so much. Next on the agenda, I asked Mr. Ross Anderson to join us in the front for his township auditor update. I hope you guys didn't miss me too much. It's been a few months, but um, I reviewed the um, warrants and expenditures for this meeting. Uh, I found no irregularities, and all my issues were all my questions were answered to my satisfaction. If any irregularity, it is James Harding hitting two game-winning threes, which is like. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
All right, next on the agenda, we ask Mr. David Berman to provide his township manager update. Thank you. I want to report this evening that the long-awaited Pensy Trail extension, which will connect the existing Pensy Trail via pedestrian bridge over Manila Road, all the way down to the Lanark Shopping Center parking lot, that project is going to begin very soon. In the coming days, we're going to meet with the immediate neighbors to discuss the impact of the project on the neighborhood. And then after that, within the coming weeks or perhaps a month or more, we'll have a meeting for the larger community to again revisit what the project's all about, the schedule and all of the other information about it. Now the project's gonna take several months to complete, primarily due to the pedestrian bridge that's gonna be fabricated offsite and then eventually brought in and set into place. The contractor for the project is Richard E. Pearson Construction Company. Inspections and oversight for the project will be by a firm called TPD and that's via a contract with PennDOT. And as always, we're gonna share further information via social media and our website as they become available. Um, Haddock Park. So beginning sometime between about May 22nd and June 5th, the Environmental, the Environmental Protection Agency will conduct a multi-week drilling project near the driveway entrance to Paddock Park. The purpose of this drilling program is to delineate the maximum depth of groundwater contamination related to the Haverford PCP Superfund site and it's gonna establish a boundary around the totality of the impacted area. So while the groundwater in this area is not currently used for drinking water, EPA does wanna capture and treat the entire area of groundwater contamination to drinking water standards. So the work for this well at the driveway entrance to Paddock Park will take approximately two weeks, one week for drilling and a second week for testing. The work's gonna take place during the day from 8 a.m. to 6, 6 p.m. And during that time, vehicles will not have access to the driveway that leads to the park from the intersection of Woodley and Hillcrest. EPA plans to be out of the way in time for the summer camp program. And again, the work's gonna start sometime between May 22nd and June 5th. Finally, the Brookline Boulevard Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project. Last month, the board awarded a contract to Abenizio Contractors of Conchahocken for the replacement of the sanitary main that runs under Brookline Boulevard from Darby Road to the municipal parking lot. It's a very challenging project because we have to minimize the disruption on the pedestrians, the vehic vehicular traffic and the business district. And we also need to complete the project before PennDOT resurfaces Brookline Boulevard, which is scheduled later this year. So to provide that contractor with the maximum ability to complete the project as quickly as possible, the work is gonna be done at night, typically 10 p.m. through 8 a.m. And um, that'll be Sunday overnight, all the way up to Friday morning. No work Friday, Saturday. Um, the work began last night. So it's gonna take approximately four to six weeks to complete barring weather and unforeseen conditions. And at the conclusion of the project, the contractor restores the roadway repairs, replaces any damaged curbs and all that work. And then later this summer, we get done on time, PennDOT comes in and resurfaces the entire length of Brookline Boulevard. And that's all I have this evening. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues on the board? Thank you, moving forward. Um, I, uh, next on the agenda, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the meeting minutes or, uh, or of April 10th. Second. We heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Berman, please take the roll. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Next on the agenda, I will entertain a motion to approve the warrants. Motion to approve the following warrant, number 5, 2023, totaling $3,716,268.10, general and sewer fund payroll for April 13th, 2023, in the amount of $705,486.49, general and sewer fund payroll for April 27th, 2023, in the amount of $764,908.68, General fund disbursements number five, 2023, in the amount of $1,788,116.29. Sewer fund disbursements number five, 2023, in the amount of 
Community Development Block Grant Fund Disbursement Number 5, 2023, in the amount of $150,961.39. Capital Projects Fund Fund Disbursement Number Five, 2023, in the amount of $142,420.06. American Rescue Plan Fund Disbursement Number Five, 2023, in the amount of $92,204.48. And credit card statement ending April 27, 2023, in the amount of $10,295.61. Is there a second? Second. Having heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues on the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman, please take the roll. Commissioner Gondek? Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp? Yes. Commissioner McCluskey? Yes. Commissioner Cavender? Yes. Commissioner Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Wexler? Yes. Commissioner Trombetta? Yes. Motion's approved. Next on the agenda, we'll hear a second reading of ordinance number P4-2023. Commissioner Trombetta, motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P4, 2023, authorizing the incurring of non-electoral debt by the Township of Haverford to finance all or a portion of costs of certain capital projects of the Township, providing for the issuance of one or more series of general obligation bonds of the Township in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $24,500,000 appointing a paying agent and a sinking fund depository and authorizing a paying agency agreement, setting forth provisions regarding the denominations, maturities, rates of interest, and terms of redemption for the bond, setting forth parameters for the maximum principal maturity amounts and dates and maximum interest rates and other details of the bonds, authorizing a book entry only system for the bonds, providing for the registration, transfer, and exchange of the bonds, authorizing the sale of the bonds by private negotiated sale and authorizing the acceptance of a bond purchase proposal, authorizing the execution and delivery of the bonds, coveting to budget and pay debt service of the bonds and pledging the full faith, credit, and taxing power of the township for the payment thereof, providing for a sinking fund for each series of the bonds, providing for a construction fund and rebate fund for each series of the bonds, making certain covenants regarding federal income tax matters, authorizing the preparation and a filing of a debt statement, borrowing base certificate, debt exclusion proceedings, and a transcript of the proceedings for the issuance of the bonds, providing for the disposition of the proceeds of the bonds, providing for the form of the bonds, authorizing a preliminary and final official statement for the bonds, authorizing municipal bond insurance, providing that the local government unit debt act shall apply to the bonds, providing that this ordinance shall be a contract with the holders of the bonds, authorizing certain additional actions, including the execution of a tax compliance agreement and a continuing disclosure agreement of the township, delegating approval powers to certain officers of the township, authorizing public hearings, repealing inconsistent ordinance and setting forth the effective date of. Second. Having heard a motion and a second, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues on the board? Um, briefly, that it, there's two very minor changes, non-substantive both, um, but just were corrected by our bond council, and it was suggested that we state them publicly in the um, at the meeting. Um, the amount of the borrowing was inadvertently omitted in section one, but it's stated multiple times throughout the document and has not changed. Um, and there was a stray sentence at the end of section four that did not apply to this. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I also just wanted to remind the public, obviously we've talked about this at length, um, but uh, the, the intention for this bond uh, include uh, stadium equipment improvements, uh, a fire and emergency apparatus uh, for one of our fire companies, a solar project, and of course, the library renovation and expansion project. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Berman, please take the roll. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion is approved. Next on the agenda, we'll hear a second reading, ordinance number P5-2023. Mr. Uh, Madam President. Vice President. Vice President. Vice President. Vice President. <laughs> yes, Commissioner. 
Voice I Brown. would like to make a motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P5-2023, amending chapter four, administration of government, part 10, physical affairs, section 4-1008, Establishment of purchasing, purchasing system to adopt certain procedures related to the solicitation and award of public contracts within the township. Providing for certification requirements for public contractors. Providing for certification requirements for subcontractors on public contracts. Providing for public contract review procedures. Repealing inconsistent ordinances or parts of ordinances containing a saving clause and providing for an effective date. Second. We heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman, please take the ball. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forstig Rupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion's approved. Next on the agenda, we'll hear a second reading of ordinance number P6, 2023. Yes, I move to adopt the second reading of, or, or, of uh, the ordinance number P, P6, or, or 2023, uh, to or to authorize the tra 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 traffic uh, restrictions on the high, high, on the highway. A uh, special pur purpose of uh, parking zones in front of Pembroke Roadside at 255 Cat Cathmere Road. Second. We've heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman, please. Mr. Take Gondek. Word. Yes. Mr. Forsty Grubb. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Cavender. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Mr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Mr. Trombetta. Yes. Motion has been approved. Next on the agenda, we'll hear a first reading of ordinance number P7-2023. I'd like to make a motion. Um, I'm sorry, six or seven? Seven. seven. Uh, Ordinance number P7-2023, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the first reading of Ordinance P7-2023, authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highway. Section 175-78, Schedule 3, One-Way Highways. Hanmuir Road from Buck Lane to East Railroad Avenue southbound. Second. We've heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? None, Mr. Berman, please. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. Now we'll move on to resolutions, uh, beginning with resolution number 2308-2023. Commissioner Cavender, I mean, Commissioner Trombetta, motion to adopt resolution 2308 2023 authorizing Hereford Township to join with other Pennsylvania local government entities and school districts as a settler of the Pennsylvania School District Liquid Asset Fund, the fund, for the purpose of investing the fund of Hereford Township on a pooled basis with funds of other Pennsylvania local government entities and school districts. The resolution also names David R. Berman, Township Manager, and Amy M. Cuthbertson, Finance Director, Assistant Township Manager, and their respective successors in office as authorized, directed, and empowered to take such actions and execute any and all such documents as they may deem necessary and appropriate to effectuate an evidence. Number one, the entry by this governmental entity into the Declaration of Trust. Number two, the investment and withdrawal of funds of this governmental entity pursuant to the investment program of the fund. And three, the exercise of the rights, powers, and privileges of this governmental entity as a settler of the fund, including without limitation voting rights pursuant to the Declaration of Trust. Second. Thank you. We've now heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues on the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. 
and passes. Next, we'll consider resolution number 2309-2023. Commissioner Trombetta, motion to adopt resolution for 2309-2023, acknowledging proper advertising of a tax equity and fiscal responsibility act, PEFR hearing, occurrence of said hearing on April 10th, 2023, documented hearing transcript and description of related projects Therefore, approving the issuance of bonds of the township pursuant to the requirement of section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986. Second. Report a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. Next, we'll consider resolution number 2310-2023. Uh, Commissioner Trombetta. Commissioner Trombetta, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2310-2023, approving this resolution authorizing appropriate township officials to execute a grant agreement with the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency in the amount of $212,228 to purchase and implement the InfoShare Law Enforcement Records Management System. Second. Thank you. We've heard a motion and a second. Are there questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. <clears throat> finally, finally, we'll consider resolution number 2311-2023. Commissioner Trombetta, I'd like to motion to adopt resolution number 2311 of 2023 that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford urges our state lawmakers to promptly pass this package of supporting anti-hate crime bills, including House Bill uh, 1027, House Bill 1024, House Bill 1025, and House Bill 1026, be it further resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford also urges all Pennsylvania and Haverford Township residents to speak up against hatred whenever they see it so that it can, <clears throat> so that we can create a more just, peaceful, inclusive society for everyone. I would also ask that I be allowed to read the resolution in its entirety into the record. Please. Whereas individuals and groups in America are targeted every day based on their race, religion, disability, gender, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, this type of behavior at times be characterized as hate crimes. And whereas over the past several years, our nation has been has seen innocent lives taken in a Sikh temple in Wisconsin, in the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Church in Charleston, South Carolina, in the Pulse Nightclub in Orlando, Florida, and the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, among others. And whereas, according to the Pennsylvania State Police website, hate crimes are believed to be grossly underreported in Pennsylvania and nationwide. Nevertheless, numerous reports indicate that, <clears throat> that has been a, there has been a significant increase in the number of hate crimes committed throughout the United States. And whereas, in the FBI's 2021 supplemental report updated in March of 2023, Law enforcement agencies reported 10,840 total incidences of hate crime and 12,822 victims, indicating that hate crime remains a real threat to communities across the country. And whereas the number of anti-Semitic incidences of assault, vandalism, and harassment are at an all-time high, and according to data compiled by the Anti-Defamation League, Pennsylvania alone saw a 65% increase in anti-Semitic incidences last year, part of a trend of rising hate and extremist actions across the Commonwealth. And whereas, five years after the Tree of Life synagogue shooting, State Representative Dan Frankel and Napoleon Nelson introduced a package of four bills that would strengthen Pennsylvania's hate crime laws to ensure more comprehensive and inclusive protections, better training for law enforcement and educators, stronger reporting mechanisms on college campuses, and increased opportunities for restorative approaches when appropriate in the wake of hate crimes. And whereas, recognizing the importance of stronger protections, the Township of Haverford Board of Commissioners wishes to give its full support to this important package of bills, 
which includes House Bill 1027, expanding the ethnic intimidation statute, House Bill 1024, law enforcement training on investigating, identifying, and reporting crimes of ethnic intimidation, House Bill 1025, reporting systems in educational settings, and House Bill 1026, requirement for hate crime offenders to complete diversity classes and allowing community impact statements. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford urges our state lawmakers to promptly pass this package of supporting anti-hate crime bills, including House Bill 1027, House Bill 1024, House Bill 1025, and House Bill 1026. Be it further resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford also urges all Pennsylvanians and Haverford Township residents to speak up against hatred whenever they see it so that we can create a more just, peaceful, and inclusive society for everyone. Resolve this eighth day of May, 2023. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues on the board? Uh, Vice President Trombetta. Uh, I just wanted to thank you and Commissioner Gondek for co-sponsoring this, uh, this resolution. I think it's important um, that we support all efforts to advance anti-hate legislation in our state. Uh, and I also just want to call out to something that, um, that Dan just said, um, and Commissioner Siegel, uh, which is that legislation is important, but what's really important are the people in a community and thinking about how people are impacted by um, hate crimes. And it's a cascading effect. I mean, it impacts not only the people who are targeted, but also the people in their lives, the people around them. Um, and it, it lacks. So I think anytime we can stand up and people feel included and welcome, um, that's our role. So I just want to thank you for thinking of this and thank you for um, giving us the opportunity um, to make this statement. Thank you. Anybody else? I would just add uh, uh, my thanks also for the those who came out to speak in support of uh, this particular uh, resolution and uh, that came here today, including uh, some of our other, some of the other public servants from around the, uh, from around the state. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, we've heard a motion. I think I'd like to just say I, I, I'm proud to be part of a board that we've, we've done this. Uh, Commissioner Holmes and I were both on the board when we passed the Human Relations Commission. And I think we're a forward-looking community that's inclusive of everybody. I think we demonstrated that back with the, with the establishment of the Human Relations Committee. As was pointed out earlier, I think it's a it's a it's an accomplishment we can all be proud of because we're the board is a living board. It goes on, but I think that was that was a big step back in the day when we did that, and we took a lot of criticism from around the uh, around the county for doing that. And I think it's uh, we stood up to that, and we're standing up again today. I hope our state legislatures stand up as much as we have here in Havertown. So thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? We've heard a motion and a second. Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we move on to our contract awards and purchases. I'll entertain a motion regarding the first item. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. A motion to accept assignment of an agreement for professional services from Haverford Township Free Library for owner representative services to be provided for the pre-construction, construction, and closeout phases of the library's renovation and expansion product project at a total cost of five hundred thirty-eight thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Yes, yeah, so I'd like to thank uh, Ken, Ken Matthews of CB Development, who's here this evening, for being here. He's attended all the meetings that we've discussed in the library. He's uh, the person that's going to be our representative on this contract and provide us with the services and oversight that we need uh, to get a total 
excellent construction project from start to finish. So, Ken, I'd like to thank you for being here and uh, appreciate the work you're going to do for us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we've heard a motion and a second. Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I'll now entertain a motion regarding the fuel slash oil. I'll make the motion to reject and re-advertise all bids for the Public Works fuel oil contract. Second. Second. As we discussed last week, this was as a result of our uh, computer malfunction. We didn't get a chance to, uh, vent we didn't feel that vendors were able to get their uh, bids in in time and in the interest of the township and in fairness to all vendors. And, uh, we're going to reject the bids that we got and re-advertise and re-solicit the project. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I make another motion to authorize the purchase of one 2023 Chevrolet Tahoe four wheel drive commercial vehicle under CoStar's contract 13 111 from Woodmere Auto Group in the amount of $45,000. Second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Yeah, I think I'm unfortunately it does look like this is the our best alternative at the present time. Um, I, I do would comment that I think we should be looking ahead. I mean, the future is electric vehicles, and we're putting money into a um, into vehicles that are going to be obsolete in five or six years. Um, one of the things that came up in here, one of the concerns was that we don't, we may not have the infrastructure to support the electric vehicles. And I think that's incumbent on us as a board. We have this ARPA funds. We should be, I mean, this is something we're going to need and we should be planning ahead. This is kind of a, uh, we should plan and spend to have that infrastructure in place. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. Finally, um, I'd like to entertain a motion regarding our Grange Park. Um, make a motion to authorize the purchase of a rock climbing wall and two cozy co cocoons from. <laughs> George Eli Associates, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, in the amount of $36,653,000. Funding for this purchase will be with ARPA money and made through CoStar's PA DGS 014E23299. Second. Thank you. We've heard a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grove. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Motion passes. We'll now move on to our appointment for some, someone on the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, Vice President Trombetta, I'd like to make an, a motion to appoint Marie Ochagrosso to fill an unexpired three-year term on the Shade Tree Commission to expire December 31st, 2024. Second. Are there any other nominations? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Brian Patterson to fill an unexpired three-year term on the <coughs> Shade Tree Commission to expire December 31st, 2024. Second. Okay, we've heard two names um, nominated. Um, Mr. Berman, take the roll. Commissioner Gondek. Marie Ochi Grasso. I apologize for the pronunciation. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Marie Ochi Grasso. And I apologize again <laughs> for mangling that. Commissioner McCluskey. Uh, Miss Marie O. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Cavender. Marie Ochi Grosso. I think that's the way you say it. 
Commissioner Quinn. We'll go with Brian Pat Brian Pat Pat Patterson. Commissioner Hart. Brian Patterson. Commissioner Wexler. Brian Patterson. Commissioner Trombetta. Marie Ochegrosso. Congratulations to Marie. <laughs> All right. Um, next, we'll have a continuation of our citizens forum for non-agenda items. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak? Okay, we'll now move on to new business. Is there any new business that the, our board members would like to bring to light? Hearing none, we'll move on to other business. Commissioner Gondek. Thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements or a couple of quick things. One is I just want to extend a, uh, a personal thank you to all the police officers uh, who are here tonight and who are honored tonight. Uh, it's just a, a, another another reminder of the high caliber of police force that this township main, maintains uh, and the great work that they do. Uh, on, on, on some other news, uh, movie night in the park uh, at Westgate uh, was postponed due to weather. It's now going to be on June 2nd. Uh, it'll be the same movie, Disney's Coco. Uh, it's a family-friendly event. I obviously encourage everyone to... Uh, try to make it out for the event to support the association and enjoy uh, the evening. Uh, I'm going to be hosting a uh, First Ward community meeting uh, on Wednesday, May 24th uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, at the Manoa Community Church on Eagle Road. I think the address is technically 153 uh, North Eagle Road. Uh, there'll be myself and uh, representatives from the township there to uh, give updates and answer questions. Um, I do encourage uh, all the residents that are interested in it to attend. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, just uh, enjoy the nice weather that's uh, starting to finally come around. Thank you. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. I would also like to echo Commissioner Gonick's thanks to the police department for their service to our township, making sure that we are safe each and every day here in Haverford Township. I'd also like to reiterate my reminder that um, Tomorrow at 6.30 in the library's community room, there will be a program called Challenging Stigma, Helping Friends and Families Understand Addiction. It is something that is made possible by a partnership between the library, uh, be a part of the conversation, and the Haverford Alliance for Drug Awareness. Lastly, I just wanted to remind folks that on Thursday, May 11th at 6 p.m., we are hosting a little ceremony at um, the Lanark Park on, on, Mono on Moen Road to celebrate the successful completion of the ADA ramp. And I invite our community in Ward 2 to come along and watch us cut a ribbon and then maybe have a, a refreshment. Wonderful. Thank you. Commissioner um, McCloskey. Um, just go back to the, the ceremony and the police awards that were given out tonight. Um, grateful that the police department honors us by uh, doing the ceremony during one of our meetings and grateful that we're able to publicize it to all the residents um, and, and, you know, give each year there's a description by uh, Deputy Chief Hagan and some of the other sergeants um, and lieutenants uh, about the, the work that is being honored. And I think it's, um, it's a credit to, to our force um, in terms of the work that they put in. And, you know, I, I think over the last seven years, it's always been um, apparent that uh, our police force acts with professionalism and is generally trying to serve uh, our township in the best way that they can. So um, thank you for letting us partake in that again tonight. Um, I just want to point out uh, in the third ward, the St. Dennis Fun Fair continues again this week. They had four great weather nights earlier this week. They were packed houses and uh, a lot of Havertown residents and residents from all over uh, the community were able to come out and enjoy some uh, slice of little Havertown Americana of the St. Dennis Fun Fair. So uh, hopefully you can be out again uh, this week if you haven't made it yet or if you just want to go again. Um, I know my kids have been multiple times and want to keep going back. So. Um, then just want to point out a, a long overdue project, uh, speaking, of course, of the pedestrian bridge that uh, Mr. Berman talked about tonight. Um, 
while it connects the second ward and the seventh ward, I do think it's a great example of um, this board supporting projects that benefit all of, of all of Haverford Township. Not only is it going to connect a neighborhood on um, the east side of, or I guess that's south side of, of Manoa Road, um, to the Pensy Trail and to the stadium and to Veterans Field, but it's going to allow a, a whole new generation of students who, who walk or bike um, to the middle school and high school uh, to not have to cross Manoa Road, to not have to travel on Darby Road to, to just get to and from school uh, a little bit better. And it's, it'll be something that'll greatly improve uh, the lives of a, a large swath of residents. And I'm um, happy to support it and happy that this board takes on these types of projects that uh, benefit all of us. And then I, I would, of course, just want to mention um, uh, that I'm excited that the, the we continue to move forward as a board for the library renovation and expansion project um, in making sure that <laughs> I read all the, the bond language correctly and following the legal guidelines of our council. Um, I did forget to mention that we learned in between last meeting and, and this meeting um, that Moody's did do their rating system for Hereford Township and we once again received the AAA rating. So this is, this is terrific news. Um, and it's a testament to our financial position. It's a testament to this board, a testament to all the employees who work in our finance department and all the employees that work throughout our township. Um, but it also reflects sound practices um, and the stability of our tax base, both of our residents and our commercial businesses. Um, specific thanks to our finance director, Amy Cuthbertson, for all the work that she did in preparing for that. Um, and it's also a reflection of her work, uh, while she might not admit it, but. Um, Township is in a strong financial position. Um, and we're just, look, with this library project, as we keep repeating, we're gonna, we're gonna keep pushing forward. We're gonna do this in a, in a responsible manner. Um, and we're gonna get a, a community hub that this township uh, deserves and will be proud of. So thank you for everyone for their support for it. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Cavender. Thank you. Um, not a whole lot tonight. I guess I just wanted to mention, I'm also happy that we were able to pass the bond um, issuance and looking forward to those projects, especially the library. Um, I think I speak for a lot of us when I say we're really looking forward to the project. And I know that um, in speaking with folks from the library, they're also excited. So I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. Um, I just wanted to highlight some things that happened at Elwell Field, um, Parks and Rec, Put in some new wood chips along the trail that goes to the college from Elwell. Um, they planted some new trees along the back, which was a project that started with Andy Lewis, and this is the second phase. Um, they also put in three new pieces of playground equipment, in particular for ages two to six at Elwell. Um, it's a new piece, and there's two new little springy animals as well that replace the like old classic ones. So we kept a little bit of it. Um, so I just wanna thank them for all the things they do to make our parks look better, uh, make them more fun and healthy for our kids and families. And um, that's great. The other thing that I uh, just wanted to highlight is that um, I'm excited we passed the responsible contractors ordinance because I, I think that's going to enable us to have another thing that we're proud of with the library, um, and that's that we're paying people fairly, we're holding contractors to a reasonable standard, and um, sort of making taking that stand as a township. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Quinn. Thank, thank, thank you. And I'd also like to thank the uh, police for the awards that continues to show why this uh, this police, police department here, led by uh, John and Joe, is the best of the best in uh, the area, and and um, I'm always proud to uh, support 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 them. And tomorrow, uh, Joe is the is a unity tour, and they'll be and they'll be go, going through uh, the town. So when you see um, like everybody on bikes, please uh, stop and cheer. And uh, thank thank them for all that the, 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 uh, 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 they do. So thank you to them. <laughs> and then the uh, like every time you hear the fi fi fire horn, um, they're off in uh, the middle of the night. They don't hear it anymore. But um, but you hear, you hear it dur during during the day. And there have been some big big fi 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 fires in uh, the, uh, the area. So please so please uh, 
pay all your dues to uh, support those um, those groups that uh, do great, great, the great work for for the community. And um, last, uh, this to me is the long, 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 long is the longest week of the year because it's stuttering aware awareness week. So. <laughs> Sorry to throw that little jo joke in there, but 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 um three 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 well three mil 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 million pe pe people in uh, the United States um have this, and I'm proud to be one of them. It ma makes me who I am. So so I'd like to thank this board for always allow allowing me to speak and not cutting me off or to you you get use it for a political advantage but I, but I, I I'm thrilled that I get to serve with all of you and um, phones and or phones and spe speaking in groups and not knock, knock and uh, knocking on doors has always been a fear fear of mine so I guess I, I um I got in uh, the wrong, wrong, the wrong, the wrong job, but I enjoy, enjoy, enjoy do, 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 doing it. And over the next um, few, few, few months, I know I'll be do, doing it a lot, a lot, a lot more. And uh, remember to vote um, on May the six, six, the on May the sixteenth. Uh, so thank, thank you to all of you. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. Yes, uh, I'm also going to give out some thank yous to the Recreation Department, uh, the EAC, uh, the vendors, and all the volunteers who made our um, Earth Day celebration really a wonderful event. Uh, especially um, thank uh, the volunteers who helped um, expand our pollinator garden and planted over 200 trees. Uh, this was done, a lot of it was families, and I'm hoping that those kids get to come back year after year and see those trees grow. Um, it's really a great, was a great event and, and one that needs to continue. Um, this week on Wednesday will be the town, the uh, rec department's first trail run of the summer. It's a 5K run. It's held at the Crack. It will be at 7 p.m. Uh, on the Wednesday. Um, I'm also going to shamelessly... Um, recommend or uh, promote uh, the second trail run, which is Anne's Purple for a Purpose Race Against Pancreatic Cancer. Uh, it'll be held on um, Wednesday, uh, June 14th at 7 p.m. Um, unlike most of the trail runs, along with the 5K trail run, there'll also be a 1K um, or one mile walk. Um, net proceeds and all donations will go to pancreatic cancer research. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Wexler. Yes, I'd like to offer my congratulations to those officers who were uh, recognized this evening. And a true story that happened Saturday, uh, just to show their dedication is what could have been, it's evolved into a non-story, but it could have been a tragic story. There was a call, a tree fell at Hilltop Field. Uh, call came in to emergency services that there were possibly people entrapped in the, in the wreckage of the tree that fell down. Uh, fortunately, there were not. I'd like to thank Chief Viola was the first officer on the scene. He was driving by, but at least seven of the officers that were here tonight were the first ones there. Um, and the adrenaline rush that you could see them rushing into the scene when they thought people were trapped within the confines of the tree was, uh, was pretty amazing. Uh, they found out that there was no people. There was enough cracking right before the thing that people were able to jump out of their chairs of the lawn chairs and get to the get out of the way of the tree where it fell and took that offense. So uh, what could have been a tragedy was averted. Fortunately, good luck. But the response of those, the people, many people that were there said they were very amazed at how quickly the officers came in and checked out the tree. And and also Chief Viola, I think he reverted back to patrolman status. So tell him we, he was the first one there. He was on his way to another place and there. And then also, so when you see them, thank them. They do. Uh, uh, no, no newspaper account of that because nobody got hurt. It became a non-issue, but they were there in case it was an issue. As well, the fire departments were on their way, but police called them off before they could get there. Uh, we have to get to the fire station. They're, they're already out. So, um, And then, as Connor mentioned, next week is primary election. It's, it's a dull, non-interesting day for a lot of people. I've had a lot of people as I'm walking around the last couple of weeks saying they're not going to go because there's nothing to do, but it's very important. I mean, this is the... Voting for our local officials, even though if it's just in your party, it's important to, 
to go out and, and take that responsibility seriously. So please go out and vote and encourage your neighbors to go out and vote and show up, even if it's just to support the people that donate their entire 12 hours there working the polls to do that. It's the, they're working for, you, for us, so I think we need to show them the respect and our duty to, to go vote, whether it's just a primary or the general election. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you. I'm going to let Commissioner Cavender say one more thing. Thank you, Commissioner Trombetta. I forgot to mention that Sunday, May 21st, from 1.30 to 2.30, we are going to hold the first public meeting for the Brinford Bicycle and Pedestrian Safety Study. So that will be at the CREC in the Evergreen Room. Um, I will share an agenda with my newsletter, and I know the township will be sending out information as well. But um, this, is a, this will be great. People can come weigh in on the traffic study and hear the updates so far. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, me. Um, so earlier this year, the Board of Commissioners passed a resolution to create an economic recovery payment program, and the application period is now open for that program. As a reminder, this is a program that provides a one-time $500 payment to seniors, widowed, or permanent, permanently disabled residents of Haverford Township who are approved for the Pennsylvania Property Tax and Rent Rebate Program. So just to emphasize there, you need to be approved through the state's program first and then apply to the township for this economic recovery payment. Um, but I'm pleased to share that Representative Vitale has two upcoming events where residents can receive assistance applying for the PA property tax rent rebate program. The first is on June 3rd. Um, appointments will be between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. at Chatham Park Elementary School. And on June 23rd, we'll be offering appointments between 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the new Surrey location in Broomall. Um, and they will also have the application for the Economic Recovery Payment Program on hand. I also wanted to mention that the Freedom Playground Maintenance Day that was scheduled um, for earlier this month has been rescheduled due to weather to June 3rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I encourage you to uh, go online and sign up for a shift shift to help us pay, paint, vacuum, or um, do some manual labor of some sort. Um, finally, it was already mentioned that Tuesday, May 16th is primary election day. Um, I'm pleased to share that I've been working with Haverford Township School District Superintendent Dr. Maureen Rushi to ensure that voters in 4-2 and 4-3 who vote at Linwood Elementary School will be able to park and vote at the top entrance of the school. This has been a significant issue over the past two election cycles where it actually became quite a safety concern where we had to park at the back. Um, but I'm really grateful to the administration and to the school board for their efforts to make this happen where we're easily able to access our voting polls at Linwood Elementary. Um, so I look forward to seeing everyone at the polls. And with that, we've exhausted our agenda for tonight. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you.